One of my most popular YouTube videos is Beating Machine Basics. It's had over 2.6 million views so far, with no end in sight. The grand finale of this video shows a fancy bomber seat made from aluminum. There's a link to this video in the comments section if you'd like to see it. A lot of people were inspired to build their own bomber seats after watching this video, and plans are available on my website. I built this seat to a pretty high standard, but I found quite a few people were intimidated by some of the details, like bending and welding aluminum, along with buying seven sizes of punch and flare dies, and setting close to a hundred rivets. Today's video shows a much simpler way to make a bomber seat. It's made from one piece of metal, steel in this case, and there's very little welding involved. I made this seat for one of my DIY newsletters for Miller Electric, and there's a link below if you'd like to see the whole article. The first step for the bomber seat is making paper mock-ups to work out the proportions and the construction details. I kept tweaking these, gradually zeroing in on a design that was properly sized, and that looked right. One of the features of this design is the large radius bends in all the corners. There are many ways to make accurate bends, but I've developed a system that's really easy. I made a bending fixture from a piece of 4 inch diameter tubing. The tube has a flange attached, and this flange has a spacer attached to it, so when the fixture is clamped to the bench, there's a small gap between the table and the fixture. This allows you to slip the metal under the tube until it bottoms out against the stop. I always do a test piece, since different material types and gauges will spring back differently. As long as you push the metal in until it touches the stop, each bend will be repeated exactly. There's no need for measuring. I start with a piece of known length, 16 inches in this case, and then I measure how much the part has shrunk. In this case, the width shrank 4.5 inches. The principle is the same for metric dimensions, of course. I'm using a felt tip marker to lay out the cuts and the hole locations on a sheet of cold rolled steel. My goal is to make the seat 18 inches wide, or about 46 centimeter. Since each bend shrinks 4.5 inches, I need to add 9 inches to my blank, so the width before bending will be 27 inches, or about 69 centimeters. I want the seat back to taper an inch on each side, so I'll take that into account when I do the layout. The bend between the seat bottom and back doesn't require a fixture. If I place 3 inch holes in the corners, I can make the bends by simply applying hand pressure to the blank. You'll see this shortly. When trimming this corner, I allow extra metal for an overlap joint. I'm using a beading machine to put a step in the overlapped area, so the joint will be flush on the inside. With the layout and trimming done, I'm ready to bend the seat sides, and my simple bending fixture makes this easy. I simply slip the metal into the fixture, make my bend, and then move to the next bend. It couldn't be simpler. Now I'm ready to bend the back. I've used a sheet of MDF to hold the seat bottom against my bench, then I simply lift the back by hand. You can make a very smooth bend this way, since the round relief holes force the metal to bend only in one area. Sweet! I like to put lots of holes in bomber seats. This is optional, but it sure does make the seat look cool. I used the smallest Jamie Jordan oval punch and flare die from Mittler Brothers for this seat. Round holes would look nice too, and the round hole dies are less expensive. Now I can make the pilot holes for the locating pins on the punch and flare dies. I'm using a rotor brooch cutter, which makes fast work of getting clean, accurate holes. A step drill would work too, but they take a lot longer. Now the sides of the seat can be trimmed. I lay out a pleasing curve on one side, then I do the rough cutting with an electric shear, and the final trimming with hand shears. Once the edge is trimmed on one side, I make patterns to transfer the curves to the other side. Now I'm ready to make the holes. 
The punch and flare die punches the hole and forms the flare in one operation, but a press is required. I'm using an electric hydraulic H-frame press, but a hand-operated press would work too. The round punch and flare dies do not require a press. They can be used by simply tightening the center bolt with the wrench. Now the joints on the sides can be completed. You can do this by plug welding or spot welding. Either technique works well. This joint could be riveted too. You could butt weld this joint and get a smoother look, but I want to keep everything as simple as possible so even beginning metal workers can get great results. For the finishing touch, I decided to cap the edge of the seat with a strip of metal. I started by bending a strip of metal an inch wide on a brake, making a J shape with one flange three quarter inch and the other flange one quarter inch. This cap is contoured to fit the seat by working the wide flange with a shrinker and stretcher. As I got close to the final fit, I hammered the cap around my bending fixture to put the twist in the part. I spot welded the cap into place. You could also plug weld it or rivet it. After spot welding, I ran the edge through my beading machine to squeeze it tight. This crimping locked the cap to the edge so securely that I doubt the welding was really necessary, but it did ensure the parts didn't shift as they were being crimped. So you see, with a little ingenuity, you can make a very cool looking bomber seat using simple tools. I love to see people get involved in the creativity of metalworking, so please subscribe and let me know in the comments section what projects you'd like to see in the future. I'll see you next time.